Hey guys, it's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So there's already been a number of videos that have led up to this one where I have reviewed the CNC, where I've had a crack at it and it kind of didn't work because of the x-axis and then I had another crack at it and then I had a problem with the uh, cracking of the actual um, spindle holder and then I had a problem with the z-axis. So I've gone out and uh, taken things apart and I've essentially, I believe, fixed that problem. So what happened was that actually within the spindle block itself, um, this blue bit here which attaches the stepper motor to the actual drive thread was loose. Uh, it wasn't super obvious because when you turn it, it was actually moving this z-axis up and down but what was actually happening was in one direction it was turning it but in the other direction it was actually running down the thread and then when you turn it in the other direction it would grab on and then bring it up even higher so what was happening was the cuts were getting less deep each time because the actual thread drive was being pulled up further than it should have been so I took that apart uh, and then I tightened it I wasn't able to get in there with some hot glue like I did on the x-axis to prevent that kind of slippage from happening. So on the actual x-axis, if I just shift the camera around there, you'll see that I've actually got some hot glue on the end here, and that's designed to stop that grub screw from slipping as well. But I couldn't get in there to do that because it's such a tight space. Now the other thing that I've done and changed for this attempt is I was able to get some 7mm scrap ply board from my collection at home uh, and cut it into a small size appropriate to fit and I've stuck that on with double sided stick tape. It is quite flat, it's very level, it's not warped from what I can tell and I've got the 10mm just as a piece underneath to protect for cut throughs. Um, what I've got happening is I've changed the actual pattern that I'm going to try and cut. And I'm going to try and cut just two because it's a smaller piece of ply board there. It's seven mil thick so two of them stacked together will be 14 which is enough for the actual switch to go through and then a base piece. And there's enough for it to do two in that one, one piece of board. So I've already zeroed it, I've already XY'd it and I've already loaded obviously the actual cut so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this time it's actually going to work and we're going to come up with something. So I'm going to switch back over and I'm going to stop this part and then we'll do the time lapse as usual and hopefully at the end of it we're going to actually get a couple of switch testers finally produced by this 3018 Mini CNC. See you very shortly. Okay, so we are back. Um, that took a little bit longer than I was thinking it would have taken, but you may have noticed that I kind of stopped it because the first cut, um, it actually, I had the plunge depth set to eight and a half millimeters. 
because I wanted to make sure that I went all the way through the 7 mil. But what it actually ended up resulting was it was crashing the the flanging, not the flanging, the sort of the conical top end. So obviously the actual cutting depth for this 1.5 mil bit was not eight and a half mil deep. And it ended up um, ripping the piece out and the focus is not doing so well, but uh, you can see it kind of got stuck. So I had to stop and reset it and then it seemed to cut okay, but now I've just realized when I took it off that that it's not centered. Um, none of these are centered and they're somehow offset to where they should be. So the left and right look okay. Um, it's obviously the y-axis and the y-axis is this one going this way which is relating to this rod and the stepper motor at the back and what I've realized just then when I was vacuuming is it looks like the grub screw that actually holds this blue bit on the lead screw has fallen out. <laughs> so I've now experienced an issue on every axis of this machine. First it was the, the X axis because the drive screw was warped and so it was bobbing up and down and I fixed that with a 3D printing fix. Then I had the grub screw coming loose on the Z axis so it wasn't retracting. Uh, it was actually retracting too much and not coming back down enough. And now on the Y axis, it's also doing something weird because it seems to be pulling, it seems to be pulling more as it's going that way and not coming back the right way. But it's consistent because you'll notice the amount of depth here is, it looks to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these off so we can see at least they cut all the way through, right? Which, which is good. Um, and I'm going to stack them on top of each other and see how they go because it may just be related to some kind of weird calibration factor. Uh, I don't 100% know right now. Making an absolute mess on the floor, but... Uh, that's why I have a hand vac. Okay, take some of that double stick side tape off it. Actually, while I'm trying to do that, uh, I'm going to keep this thing charging because it was running out of power. Okay, so we'll just ignore those base pieces for the moment. Now the reason why I'm not doing this over my desk as normal is because I don't want all of this fine dust to be over my desk. It's uh, bad enough that it's going to be on the floor here, but at least that's easier to clean compared to it being off my desk. Okay, so there's the other two pieces. And you'll see that it actually did plunge a little bit into that. So the 7mm that this board claimed to be actually wasn't even 7 mil. it was probably just under 7 mil because the tip on the last pass was actually just scoring that uh, protection, that sort of sacrificial layer underneath. Okay, so I've got them all now and I'm just going to line up all four pieces and look at that, it looks fine. All four pieces look pretty much aligned to each other. Um, it's just that there was some weird offset happening there. That said, it could actually... I'm having a look at the actual screen. Um, so let's just bring that up to... Okay. So this is what it was, but they're centered. They're centered. So they definitely has been some kind of translational error which has caused these pieces to not sit straight. But you know what, as far as it goes, it is actually a technical success if switches fit in it. So here is my stuck box yellow that I use as my shortening switch. And uh, 
Will it fit? Oh, no, it will not fit. It's very tight and it will not fit. So there you have it. Um, or will it fit? Oh, okay, so one direction it fits, the other direction not so good. But there we go. So now that's sitting, just focusing too much on the background. Hello? Okay, so there you go, it's sitting flush. And you can see the bottom of it is just poking out. Uh, and that's why it's kind of recommended that you need about, you know, maybe close to 10 mil. So if anything, um, if I actually, because these are PCB mount, switches there's no prongs on the bottom of these uh, besides the pins so you could actually trim those flush and, and they would you can see how much it's flexing over here because it's not clipping in uh, but it is actually pretty close to flush I can really sort of squish that down if I want to uh, but obviously if I do two of them then that's that's heaps of clearance not an issue with it whatsoever and uh, the cuts are actually pretty clean like, if it'll, f <laughs> the focus on this thing is, is not the best since it's not designed for close work. Well, you'll just have to believe me that it's actually really smooth. I mean, when you're running a spindle at 7,000 RPM, it does a, a pretty decent job. So if I glue these together, then I'm going to have a super fat um, tester, which will look kind of like that. I suppose that gives it space up the top incidentally if I want to write or put a sticker or a label on what that actual switch is or like a logo or something like that. Alternatively, if I go back to using the 3 mil uh, ply board and I cut a piece out of the 3 mil and I put it on the bottom of that, that should give the clearance especially if it's got uh, actual pins like PCB mount pins. Whoa, and now this thing is super stark because of how tight that board is. So I think it's probably fixable just with a light bit of uh, filing. I just use like a, a file. I'm sure I could, yeah, okay. Cut that out with my switch core. But for what it is, you know, it kind of did the job, if not offset, but um, there's some user error issues there. There's obviously some issues in regards to the y-axis going this way however at the end of the day i'm actually going to call this a success it's a success because it actually cut pretty close not a hundred percent to what i was hoping it would do um obviously there's more tweaks and i probably want to put some kind of protective sheet over this side so as it moves the dust isn't coming down onto the screw because that could be potentially related to it jamming and causing it to not go the right way. Um, yeah. What else can I say? Not very much. So there you have it. It's been a very long journey uh, to get to actually cutting some something worthwhile out of that. As long as you can get these axes and these adapters on proper and tight, um, I think it'll probably do the job. Well, there you go. Thanks very much for checking out the video. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, hopefully you enjoyed this series in regards to trying to get this thing up and running and, um, you know, testing it out, running through its paces, the pitfalls that you might encounter with one if you choose to pick up one of these. And of course, if you want to check out the listing and if it's on sale or special or something like that, there's always going to be a link below in the video description. And of course, if you choose to get one, um, I would love and appreciate if you used my affiliate link because it helps me out uh, so I can get more weird and wacky things like this to review in the future as well. So thanks for checking out the video. And of course, until next time, happy clacking.